I've covered these topics to some extent or other over the last few years in gadgets. So I'd like to have another go at them, like bring them into the fold of this HCOPE tutorial series and uh, hopefully add a little value along the way. So let's do it. If you're coming to HCOPE from another platform, like some other oscilloscope software, this is the screen that would look the most familiar to you. It's a conventional layout. You've got volts on the vertical scale, time across the horizontal scale. It's a very powerful mode. It allows for various triggers, various filters. You've got a math channel you can uh, apply. There are measurement tools. There are overlays. But it differs from what you might have been accustomed to in other oscilloscope software in that the scope mode here only gives us one page, right? You get the buffer, the hardware buffer from the oscilloscope gets dumped here, right? And once full, that's one page. It overwrites and then you get another page, but the previous page is lost. This scope mode here does not give you sequential pages. Now HCOPE does give us that capability, just not here. So I don't want to get ahead of myself here. So we're in the automotive mode right now. It could have easily been called streaming mode, yet it was called automotive mode. We'll try to get to the bottom of that. I'll just hit record here. It's streaming right now. Have a look at this very long buffer time. 51 minutes at this setting. Let's go in settings. Right here, memory allocated, right at the bottom. We can select how much memory of the device, the Android device, the phone or tablet, how much memory we dedicate to this automotive mode, all right? So different Android devices will top out at different uh, buffers, memory buffers. Uh, mine tops out at 1250 megabytes, okay? Set aside in RAM for this, but it gives us very long record times. This is useful in automotive work. Automotive work is low frequency kind of stuff for the most part. Now you see here the numbers that are in blue. These are the available rates for this automotive mode. Notice that they're on the slow side even though here we're at a maximum on the blue is 600 kilosamples per second, okay? But that's because we're using an HS512 Max, which has a very generous automotive streaming rate of 600 kilobytes per second. Typical oscilloscopes that are supported by HScope for this automotive mode, they top out at about 125 kilosamples per second. Now that is still uh, fast enough for most automotive work. Maybe not so good for electronic work. That's why this streaming mode that Martin named it automotive mode. It is the typical use for it. The automotive module is typically a separate license for supported oscilloscopes, except those HS Siri oscilloscope on Martin's store, which have the automotive module as part of the package. That's what makes uh, these uh, HS Siri oscilloscope uh, like a no-brainer, really. Uh, they're such a, a good value, right? There are two start methods to this, okay? Right now, we're in automatic start. I'm going to press record, and HScope automotive module detected that there was a waveform uh, on the BNC, and start to capture right away automatically. We'll stop that. Go into the settings. 
So right here in Record Start, I'm on Automatic. We can choose Manual. Let's get all the settings. Let's hit Record. Notice now that it is waiting for our input. All right. To press Start. And now the recording will start. Having an automatic start might be advantageous, say you're doing a relative compression test. You set everything up, uh, your oscilloscope and your tablets under the hood, you walk over to the driver's seat, as soon as you start cranking, the recording will start, and you won't waste all this buffer time leading up to it. Advantage to manual start is here, where you can zero a probe and then hit start. Look at how much recording we have here. Okay. Depending on how you set that buffer and depending on the sample rate that you're using, the amount of time that you get is uh, measured in minutes and even up to hours. That's why uh, this automotive module mode is uh, so well suited for automotive work. So just now in the automotive mode, I was telling you that the available sample rates were outlined in blue here. Okay. What about these white ones? Those put us in something called automotive pages. In scope mode, I was telling you that you couldn't get sequential pages, but that 8 scope had that capability. And I didn't want to get ahead of myself then. Here we are. Okay, so this is that capability of sequential pages. It's done within the automotive module. And when you choose one of these white, sample rates. Let's try one. 300 here in white. Okay. Press record. Start. We're allowed 1800 pages here. Okay. Huge buffer this automotive module. Okay. I'll stop that. So let's have a look. Notice that there's a gap between these pages, okay? A separation. When the buffer from the hardware gets over to this software, okay? It stops taking measurements for a brief period of time because uh, it can't chew gum and walk at the same time. So it dumps the buffer here then resumes measurements, refills a buffer, stops taking measurements, and then dumps the buffer again, okay? You get to see it in H-scope because of the way these pages are displayed. Uh, by the way, I do like to see all these sequential pages like this, okay? Because typically in other software, you're kind of going from one page to the next, you lose track of the previous page, here, until you zoom in you, to get one full page, you get to see them all on that one screen. Okay? And those other software, they also stop uh, taking measurements as they're working their buffer and then get resumed taking measurements. They do the same thing as HScope, but because because of the way they display their pages, you don't see it. You're going over to one page, you move over to the next one, you're thinking that those were all seamless. They're not seamless. There's gaps. Now that is why also on the automotive module with the streaming, okay, those blue, those blue numbers here, when you're in that mode, that, that is true real-time streaming. There are no page boundaries, no gaps, and that is another big advantage to the automotive module. That's about as much as in depth as I want to go into these topics today.
I want to be able to give you an overview of how Ascope does things. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next installment.